Sam LaPrat Show continues on City News. 1011 FM and 1310 AM. Welcome back to the Sam LaPrad Show. Derek Fage here filling in for Sam for the next couple of weeks. I'm just going to describe my next guest before we get to her. She's an accomplished artist whose work spans the globe. Not only does she sell her original artworks worldwide, but she also has seen success in the apparel industry as she launched her signature collection of Claire Desjardins Apparel for Women in North America in January of 2019 and in the UK in February of 2020. She has participated in numerous fairs across North America, from L.A. to New York to Toronto, um, and she is represented by a handful of galleries, both in the U.S. and here at home in Canada. She's Montreal-born, born, um, once a resident of, of Ottawa, but now lives with her husband husband and their two dogs in the beautiful Laurentian Mountains, which is about an hour north of Montreal, uh, really known for her use of vibrant colors, um, dynamic brush strokes, really engage and that really engage and delight art lovers. Um, her latest exhibition is on right now, right here in Ottawa at Wall Space Gallery in Westboro Village. And she joins us here on the show. Claire Desjardins, abstract artist joining us. How are you, Claire? Oh, I'm good. Wow, what an intro. <laughs> <laughs> well, you. you and I met quite a few years back, and uh, I found, you know, not only your art amazing, but, you know, you're just um, one of those people that, that has really stood out to me in my in all my years of doing television and radio, which spans uh, 18 years now. And you just have this wonderful spirit, and I think that really comes through in, in your artwork. And you've got a brand new exhibition called Ready to Exhale. Uh, let, let's talk about, you know, the inspiration behind that, th- this particular exhibition well this inspiration the, the inspiration is a little bit different than what I um, probably am better known for I, I'm I think a lot of my followers know me for a, a sort of a cheerful joyful dose of, of happiness mm-hmm. and and that is what I typically paint and even this exhibition is is I, I use bold and bright colors um, but I was asked to uh, put together a body of work for the exhibition by the gallery um, back in February. And I said, oh, yes, sure, no problem. Um, I was away in Florida and I figured, oh, I'll have plenty of time. I've got some pieces that I had in mind. And um, I returned to Canada. Uh, We were snowbirds this last winter. Okay. And um, we returned to Canada, and almost immediately, my mother became very sick, and um, and and she ended up passing away in uh, at the end of May. Oh, and, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. It was it was um, you know anybody who's lost a close uh, you know a relative knows about the the challenges of. Um, the the loss and and processing it and processing grief and um and and so actually that became sort of I, I became all consumed by the the whole process you know my mom was in and out of hospital and uh, I was quite close to my mom right. so I was there a lot um, in fact to the point where I slept in the room on a on a gurney next to her uh, most nights so you know it really became all I pretty much thought about um she had a stroke actually she had a, a, quite a few strokes about uh, i think they said 20 to 30 strokes wow and uh and it was just a steady decline so right you know i also you know there were a couple things that had happened so of course you know i'm emotionally you know very um attached to my mom so you know i'm uh, and and concerned about her health so during those weeks where i was in the hospital with her um i found myself um you know there was a lot of time to listen to the sounds and to think about you know where where my life was going and and what's important and uh and, and i decided to chronicle that with uh um, a sketchbook because I didn't have my studio. Obviously, I was right, you know, yeah, in the hospital. I couldn't paint it like I would usually paint. So um, I had my trusty markers and and uh, my my sketchbook, and that's where it all started. Is I just started. You know, my mom was out of it. She couldn't really speak anymore. Um, so I started just drawing things and and making notes, and um, and I ended up actually writing quite a bit. Um, oh, really? Okay. Okay. Yeah, which so is so. Is not, that is that included? Not, Do we see some of that in in these pieces? Yes, yes. In fact, the gallery's been fantastic. I mean, they've really been so supportive throughout this process, and they have allowed me to um, uh, show not only the paintings but also uh, to chronicle the the 
passing of my mother because it was over, you know, six weeks period. And um, so they have, you know, they have printed out bits and pieces of my journal. There's a, a book in the gallery that I wrote everything. It has photographs as well. Um, you know, because you, you, when you're in that position, it just, you know, you get very... Um, uh, well, nostalgic before being nostalgic, if that right. makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, I didn't no, want I to forget anything. You know, I wanted to make sure I got it all down. I wanted to make sure I remembered every last detail, the curl of her hair behind her ear, um, you know, like all those little details I was afraid that I might forget. And so I, I wrote everything. I wrote and I drew everything, too. And I took photographs and um, it became a bit my obsession. <laughs> um <laughs> And, uh, you know, and, and, but it also helped me a lot too, in terms of grieving and, uh, it helped me to be able to work through, uh, a lot of the things I was feeling, the sadness. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, what's the link sort of, cause you, you're, you're dealing with loss and, you know, you're a creative person that loss and creativity, what, what, what's the link there? Well, it, it, it it's a, there is a big link there because for me, um, creating art, making things with my hands has always been really important and uh, it's been a um, sort of an elixir to uh, to life's bumps and grinds and um, and, and it's a way, a sort of an, a form of escapism, I suppose. Right. And, um, and you do, you can get into your head a lot. Um, you know, as an artist, you can, uh, you can definitely have a dialogue in your head that can go either way. But I, I do find that uh, painting, especially, or, or, or it could be drawing, whatever, making stuff with my hands, making art, um, is very helpful for me if I am able to, uh, make something that that makes that gives me pleasure right. in other words uh using beautiful colors and shapes and forms uh it kind of lifts me up and out of whatever potential funk that i might get into um which you know when you know going through this um i i felt like i was kind of on the edge a little bit at times <laughs> um yeah. you know whereas uh you know and it kind of helped to ground me a lot and um and, and you know, putting like like I said, putting putting it all down somewhere. It gave me um, it gave me something that I will always have. You know, to remember these times when I want to. I yeah, I mean that's really that's really special. Something that many people you know don't have and and perhaps haven't taken the time. And I and I think you may inspire people. You know, perhaps they they can't release how they're feeling in in the same artistic way but just as you described you know all the the writing you did and just the small sketches and the you know writing texts and and, and poems and you've I, I think you're giving us all just ideas on how you know we can keep these wonderful memories going for for someone we've lost i, I mentioned off the top you know just Claire, how incredibly accomplished you are, and I, and I really think it's because not only you're a wonderful artist, I think you're also a great business person. I think people forget when, you know, when you talk to to artists and about them, what makes them successful is oftentimes um, not only because they're so good at their craft, but they're also very good at 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 the business side of things. And you've done very well with that. I, I you've got your collection of women's apparel and, and and merchandise. And how did you how do you find companies? How did you collaborate with different companies for for these sort of things? Well, one thing that I find very helpful, I, I get asked that um, often, I think, by other artists. And um, uh, I think that just kind of keeping up with my game uh, in terms of social media, um, okay. it's much more than just um, just going into my studio and painting or drawing because you can make the most beautiful artwork. But if nobody knows it's there, um, it's very hard to make a, earn a living off of that. So, um, you know, I don't want to have another job. I only want to be an artist. Um, so I thought long and hard about it. And I said, well, this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to make, um, I'm going to make contact with companies. I, I use LinkedIn. I use, okay. uh, you know, I, I'll look up, I, I do a fair amount of research, um, 
You know, it's, it's the business side of art, right? right? I'm also supported by people who help me with that. You know, I have a wonderful husband, David, who does, um, you know, today, for example, <laughs> we are cramming it in, trying to get an RFP responded to by three o'clock today. So, <laughs> I go, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, it's like that. You know, it's not, it's not just sitting on a chaise long eating bonbons. It's, it's, my life is not nothing like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think there are misconceptions, um, right? When it, when it comes to art. Is people have these these misconceptions and they don't realize to become an artist becoming so successful such as yourself is that you you work incredibly hard at it right i do work hard i will say you know it's um yeah you have to be persistent but fortunately i'm persistent at something i really love to do yeah. so it doesn't really feel like work um, I know where you're you know, coming from, you know, as a, yeah. as a radio host, television host, this is what I wanted to do since I was five, six years old and, and I'm doing it. So it just feels, yeah. it doesn't feel like work. I mean, you put a lot of hard work into it, but you love it so much. It, it doesn't feel like work. Um, let's remind yeah. everyone about the exhibition and, and the details before I have to let you go here. Okay. Well, it's at Wall Space Gallery, which is at 358 uh, Richmond Road. That's uh, right in the heart of, of Westboro Village in Ottawa. And um, Phoebe, Tiffany, and Ava are working there. And so please stop in and say hello. The, uh, the exhibition was going to run until August 1st, but I just got word that uh, it's actually going quite well. And they've extended it to August 8th. So, oh, terrific. Um, yeah, yes, yeah, so I'm really pleased about that. No kidding. And um, yeah, so that's it. That's my that's my thing. And you have a and wonderful it, website as well. Um, share your website with everybody at home so they can go and have a look at some of your wonderful pieces um, if they if they uh, don't make it down to Wall Street. Okay, well, my my website is ClaireDesjardins dot com, and uh, that's it. I'm on social media as well, so I, I'm I. I pretty findable if you are looking for me. <laughs> Excellent. Claire, a real pleasure catching up with you after all these years. Uh, thanks so much for reaching out to me. Oh, and thank you, Derek. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Uh, that is Claire Desjardins, abstract artist. Her new exhibition at Wall Space Gallery, she just said, just got extended until August the 8th. It's called Ready to Exhale. Uh, down at Wall Space Gallery, 358 Richmond Road, uh, as as Claire mentioned, uh, a great gallery if you haven't been. And and by the way, uh, you know that's that's sort of my neck of the woods down there. So you know, make a make an afternoon of it. Visit Wall Space Gallery, and then go visit some of the other wonderful retail and and restaurants that that are down there in Westboro Village. All right, we're going to take a quick break. This is Derek Fage filling in on the Sam LaPrade Show, and of course, you're listening right here on City News.